Welcome to Live from the Garden. I'm Karina, creator of the Let Us Live Edible Garden Movement. Together we will tour backyard, farms, rooftops, and other inviting spaces, all with the hopes of inspiring you to get out and get growing. We want to help you be a better gardener. We want to share tips. We want to inspire you to grow food for your family and your community. So please like, share. If you know of a gardener or a farmer that should be on our show, tag them, invite them, or send me a DM so we can invite them on the show. All right, now that I got that out the way, let me bring Nicole in, and she is with Sisters of the Soil. Love the name, love the colors. Welcome to Live from the Garden, Nicole. Thank you so much for joining us. And to kick it off, can you do us a favor, introduce yourself and tell us where we can find you on the social media platforms? Hello everyone and thank you Karina for having me. Um, I am one half of Sisters of the Soil, um, my friend and partner April. Um, she's the other half. You'll be doing an interview with her um, next Saturday. But my name is Nicole. Uh, you can find us at Sisters of the Soul on IG and also on Facebook. All right, on IG and Facebook. So you all hear that, Sisters of the Soil. And as she mentioned, next week we will have her twin or her double um, <laughs> on the show. And what I like about what they're doing, they live in two different cities and they decided that they, they loved gardening and wanted to inspire people so much that they created one page and together they operate that page and they share information from both of their gardens in two different places. I think that's cool, exciting. And it really does what I love is which is building community and they're working together. So thank you all again for joining us. And without further ado, let's just jump right in. Tell us, did you come from a family of growers or farmers? Yes, well, I, I actually, uh, my grandparents were sharecroppers on my mom's side. Um, but as far as gardening in my immediate family, not so much, but my love from gardening actually came from my now husband. Um, his grandparents have a big garden in their backyard, um, and we've been dating since college, so I've been around for quite a few years now. We've been married for 13 years now, um, but when we go to Mississippi, they live in Mississippi, we work in their backyard. Um, his grandparents' meals they prepare for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, their vegetables always come from their backyard, so it's something that I've always wanted to do, um, but just... I guess kind of put it on the back burner to get started. Um, just, you know, how you always say, I don't have time to do it, but you make time for what you want to make time for. So that's kind of uh, where we came from. And so you mentioned that your husband ins kind of inspired you. Tell us what that, what experience that was that really led you to say, okay, I'm going to jump all in and I am going to start gardening. Um, so yeah, it really uh, started last year. Uh, during the pandemic, it was something we always wanted to do, um, but we've kind of moved, traveled a little bit the last couple of years, so we haven't been in our, um, I guess, say our own home. Uh, we rented, so last year we were in Georgia, and we were renting, but it was, well, can we really start a garden, you know, by being not in your own home, mm -hmm. um, and the answer is absolutely, um, so that was the inspiration. Um, him and I just did a little bit more research on how we could do that and then pondered across lots of YouTube videos and container gardening. So that's where we got our start at. We started with container gardening. And believe it or not, we didn't start small. We jumped right in from wow. oregano, basil, tomatoes, cabbage. I mean, we kind of had a little bit of everything starting out. Um, but it, for him, it was something that, you know, he's always done. He's worked in his grandparents' garden before. Um, so for me, I was a little bit nervous um, what I was getting into, um, but it turned out for the good. Wow. And so you mentioned two things that I want to piggyback on is he, you, you all started large. What was, 
the size of your first garden? Was it a bunch of pots, a bunch of raised beds? How did you start your first garden? Yeah, so we started um, with nothing but containers, our grow bags that we actually sell now um, that we started in. And we probably had anywhere from three gallon to five gallon, depending on the plant, if it was cabbage, you might've had a 10 gallon, um, but we had about, I would say 10 pots on our deck. So we mm -hmm. went full in. Wow, that's a that is a lot, but look for some of our because we're here to inspire people and everybody might Absolutely. not be a grower or a gardener. Tell us what grow bags are. So grow bags are pots, um, round pots that you can move anywhere. They are durable enough to last several row seasons. I mean, they're actually great for if you have smaller spaces or like us, it wasn't our own property. So we didn't want to dig into the ground. Um, so if you in an apartment, just have a small little space that you can grow, grow back to something that you want to start in. And I have a few back here that I can show you once we get moving. Great. So you all, she's going to show us what a grow bag looks like. And to her point is, it's durable, it's, it's made out of cloth, you can move it around. So if you're not in your own space, then you can um, move it around. And yes, Phyllis, you can put that on the balcony. You can Absolutely. perfect for uh, balcony gardening. Is It's a cloth, it has handles, and she'll, um, she'll sh show us, Nicole will show us in a moment. Yes. But yes, it's doable for, and it's ideal for balconies because just about everything, would you agree, just about everything that we eat, we can grow it in a pot or a bag. I know everything that I do, you can grow it in a pot or or a grow bag. Would you agree? Yes, I agree. Um, just about everything. I think um, even corn, April grew corn in a grow bag. And that was something that we were kind of like, ah, oh, you can't do that in a grow bag. Um, so kind of here lately, it's been trying what can we not grow in a grow bag? So we're going to throw it in a grow bag first and then we'll decide later whether or not it's probably better to be in ground. But yeah, just about anything that you eat vegetable wise, herb wise, herbs are great in the smaller grow pots. Um, but yeah, just about anything. And they're good. And Sarah, you, one of our other viewers, Sarah, you have a young boy. And so that grow bags are perfect for young kids because they can reach them they can kind of move move them and claim them as their own kind of garden space would, would, would you say that absolutely mine started uh, my oldest like cayenne pepper um so i'll show you in a minute um but he started with a smaller cayenne pepper we saved the seeds from last year so now we have an even bigger cayenne pepper plant but he is the, the one that likes spices in the family and then my youngest likes celery. So believe it or not, we grew celery in a grow bag. Um, so that was his little baby that he took care of. And when it was time to harvest, he was just so excited to be able to just walk right out, pull a few stalks off, wash them off, and there's your snack. Wow, I love to see young people just grabbing stuff out of the garden and just eating it and not being afraid of it. It, it tastes different. If you all haven't had a yes. chance to experience that, I, I think everything from your root vegetables to your leafy greens, everything tastes different. Tomatoes, especially. Yes. I do not buy tomatoes at the grocery store and I don't eat them in a restaurant because they just do not taste the same. I, I agree. Um, I put together a little harvest basket from some of my banana peppers, uh, bell peppers. I had some potatoes that we grew for uh, five of my best friends, and they even sent me messages back and was just like, wow, just the freshness of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I agree. It just, it's just something about it. It just tastes different. It does. And speaking of harvest, do you remember your first harvest? And do you remember the experience and what that was like when you harvested your first, what was it? My first harvest? Uh, well, it was multiple since, like I said, we had about 10 things that we were growing at the time. Um, but it was tomatoes, to me, are one of the easiest things to grow. Um, and then bell peppers. Um, just We had about five bell pepper plants, just because that's our thing. I like green, orange. I like to see the colors. Mm -hmm. um, so to have that first 
uh, harvest of bell peppers and to see all of them thriving, all of our five plants thriving, um, that probably was like the moment where I was like, okay, I think I'm on to something. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I remember for me, my first harvest where I was like, all right, I may be able to, I think I'm doing something here. I may be on to something as well. It was sweet potatoes. Oh, um, I was digging and I had the pitchfork and then I dug out sweet potatoes and more sweet potatoes <laughs> and more sweet potatoes. I'm like, ah, sweet potatoes. Yes. They just kept coming. They, yeah. they were the gift that kept going. I was so excited about that because it was, as you know, the ground is just full of them and you're just yep. pulling them out, pulling them out. Uh, so I was super excited about my first harvest and yours, bell peppers. I love bell peppers straight from the garden. They yes. don't taste the same. You, they're sweet. <laughs> we, they're kind of sweet to me. Yeah, I agree. They, they just do not taste the same. And believe it or not, haven't been able, haven't had to buy one. Just maybe in the fall, in the winter, of course, but yeah. just summertime, haven't had to go in the grocery store to buy bell peppers. And I love yeah. it because they are expensive right now. <laughs> Sarah said, did you notice your bell peppers growing a little bit smaller or would you say big in size still? This year, definitely smaller. Um, smaller and a lot slower than last year. Mines were a lot slower and smaller. What I was going to say is I noticed if you because uh, peppers will come back every year, like you can keep them every year. The mm -hmm. second year, sometimes they're a little bit smaller than they were the first year, but all of my peppers this year took a long time to start growing and they were a lot smaller. My pe pepper plants are struggling. That happened to me a few years ago. And what happened was around November, December, my peppers started taking off right before the winter time. Oh, mm. So well, I hope, uh, hope to keep mine around that long um, this time to see, but I don't know. That's another thing, like you say, with the grow bag, what you can grow or what you can't grow. Um, sometimes I think that too, maybe they just don't have enough, the roots don't have enough space in the grow bag, you know? So um, we plan to next spring, since we have, we're back at our home, our first home here in Greenville um, to put in the ground some bell peppers just to see the difference, kind of gauge the difference on growing in a grow bag versus in the ground. Yeah, and I think that's the importance of saving seeds because if we keep buying plants from, if I'm buying a plant, a plant from the same source that you're buying it from and Sarah's buying the same plant from the same source, then we're gonna have the same experience, slow grow, little right. seeds. And so if you save your seeds, then, you can change kind of what your plant is going to do. That's why I think seed saving is really important. Uh, Sharon said, Sharon Sharp says, well, Sharon Sharp says, if you don't have a lot of space, dwarf varieties like tiny Tim tomato and bush, bush um, patio, bush and bush or patio cucumbers are perfect. Yes. Okay. Cucumbers and dwarf, I don't know. Only dwarf I know is fruit trees. I'm not familiar with dwarf kind of vegetables. Yeah, I'm not either. And what was the cucumber variety again? Patio cucumbers. Now I've heard of those. I think that okay. just bush is a little bit different. And Joe Williams says, you're right. Garden fresh tomatoes are absolutely fabulous. I yes. agree. I agree. They don't taste the same. All right, y'all. Y'all didn't come to hear us doing a whole <laughs> lot of talking. You all want to see Nicole's Garden Oasis. And we will start our tour in just a moment. If you have any questions as she does the tour, you see something you want her to double back on, please type it in the message. I'll ask the questions. Don't forget little housekeeping. I always say like, share, comment. That helps with our rating. And our rating if the, the rating helps us, helps more people see the content. And so if you find the content valuable and you like, share, or comment, that just spreads the word and gets our content out. 
And again, our ultimate goal is to inspire more people to get out and get growing. That's really what our goal is. I want more people to grow food for their families. All right, so Nicole is in place. And she's been here. out here helping me on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> she is uh, in place and she is ready to start our tour. Again, ask any questions. All right, Nicole, it is in your hands. All right, come on over. I have my, uh, this is my table. I have most of my grow pots at. Um, I have my potatoes here, as you see, are blooming. Um, I harvest probably about two bags worth already of um, Yukon gold potatoes. And I just took those from Kitchen Scraps. Can kitchen you scraps. show us, can you lift up the leaves and show us the grow bag or show us the container yes. it's growing in? Yep. So this is what they would consider a potato grow bag here with a little flap here. Okay, and so then you just pull, you open that up and pull the potato, the potatoes at, at the bottom. I can pull from the bottom or once the pull, I normally do it once the foliage starts to die down for me, then I'll just dig, dig from the top. Okay, and then another question, are your, do you keep your plants on the table there and that's where you water them or you just put them up there for now? Is that where they stay? Yes, this is where I'll leave them at and I'll just water them from here. Oh, wow. Okay. So here's my raspberry. So this would be a seven gallon bag that our raspberry is in. So as I was saying, look how like durable the bag is. It's not heavy at all, even though the soil is kind of pretty packed in there. So this is my raspberry. Um, these were a few blueberry bushes we bought last year and a lemon tree. So of course they're still in their own and a blackberry. They're still in their own pot here. This is my cayenne pepper that I was telling you about. Same thing here as far as the size of the grow bag here. So it's very easy if I just wanted to take it, put it in another spot. So very easy to move, not too heavy. Um, but this is the one that I was saying my oldest son loves. So we have a bunch of them here um, that we have to harvest and still flowering. Wow, that looks so healthy. And you all see how small that bag is. It doesn't take yep. up a lot of space. And as this Phyllis is me asked, holding the bag, not yes, at all. As Phyllis asked earlier, it can you do it on the patio? You can see those can be ideal and you can kind of snuggle them in a corner if you don't have a whole lot of space. The key is you have to have six to eight hours of sunlight. That would be the Absolutely. only thing that you need to consider. So here's my banana pepper still holding on um, pretty strong. Got one here that needs to be harvested. See how it's already turned red. It's been on there so long. And I have another banana pepper plant here. So most of these Your are- pepper these are, plants look, they don't look like they're struggling to me. You have more peppers. My banana pepper, I ended up pulling it out. It was struggling. Your pepper plant looks pretty good. Yeah, it's been doing pretty, uh, pretty good, I, but I do, I had about four of them. So this is two. <laughs> so these two are the ones remaining, okay. I would say, yeah. Um, and bell pepper here, kind of the same. So here's one that's, I tried to wait for it to turn, but sometimes you just gotta go on and get it. <laughs> if you don't get it, somebody else will. <laughs> right. And so uh, right here, I have bunch of onions in both of these. These are my bunch of onion plants. Can you tell us a little bit about bunch of onions? Will they make a bulb? Can you, are you, do you use the green tops? How do you use yes. bunch of onions? So they do. If you look down at the bottom, it is a bulb. If you just pull out here, but I just snip them from the top. So yeah, I'll just snip them from the top right there. So it would be pulling one at the bottom and it'll just keep keep coming mm. but yeah I just take a snip here and just keep going and you you cook with the green part of the onion correct yes okay. correct just chop it up and the flavor is powerful I can tell you yes, yes. smells good right now 
these are a little bit of harvest I had today left over from um, our tomatoes. But like you said, these tomatoes are so fresh, so fresh. Tomatoes and bell peppers here. So I like to, I've been making salsa and sauces all summer. Um, so I hope to continue that for the winter so we'll have our own homemade spaghetti sauce. Oh, yeah. Come on downstairs. And Shannon says, I love your grow bags. Your veggies look so nice. And Sarah said she's impressed. Phyllis said everything looks great. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll tell you our website when we finish up um, at the end of the show where okay. you can find our grow bags at. Awesome. All right, come on down. This is where we have began working on our fall garden. So this is my little garden space. I say little because we have all of this land, um, but we just wanted to kind of start small to see what we got. So here I got some collards in. Uh, we've dropped Brussels sprouts already. Um, I have broccoli. And then over here, cheese haven't popped up quite yet. A few have. We have onion and carrots in these two rows. Those first two rows, all those plants there, did you start by seeds or starter plants? These are starter transplants, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, collards, I will do both seeds. So I will, um, I have dropped seeds for those, um, but Brussels sprouts and broccoli. Brussels sprouts, I'll do seeds too. The broccoli, um, I've just kind of done transplants the last two years just because it's been a late start to dropping the seeds. Um, so I may still try just to see what I get and how long they last. I like to do experiments just to see if I drop them later than supposed to. Um, we'll see what happens with them, whether or not you know they turn out okay. Um, but most of these are starter. And like I said, I do have seeds dropped here for onions and carrots. And what was your process for getting that space ready to start growing? Because I'm assuming it was grass like the rest of your, the rest of your yes, area. Yes, it was grass. So we cut the grass down low. I say we, but my husband did cut the grass down low. Um, and then we bought a tiller. So we had to buy a tiller to till um, the soil. Um, we had added some of our compost in there to turn it up, added vermiculite and perlite in it as well. And what um, does vermiculite and perlite do? Vermiculite and perlite helps, um, just helps the plants thrive. It provides uh, added nutrients to it and it just helps it thrive. Okay. And, the, and, and that, that's really good, you all, vermiculite. Uh, probably if you're not gardening, you probably see that a lot in plant in your house plants and it really helps like keep your whole moisture in your soil as well. So Absolutely. yes, we use some of the same things that we use on our plants. We use some of those same things in the garden as well. Absolutely. Um, and take you on back here. I have celery and I did these from transplants as well. Um, we have a good little nursery not too far from us. Um, so I like to try to support local business here versus, I know we can all go to the big box Home Depot Lowe's, uh, but they had some locally grown um, transplants. So I just bought a couple of celery here. Quick question. It. Have you had success with growing celery or is this, I've never been able to grow celery. Yeah. So this will be our first time growing it in the ground, um, but we had success growing the celery last year in a transplant bag. Um, lots of it. Um, if you guys will check out our Instagram page, you'll see several of our harvests um, from that. You got to go scroll back a little bit, but um, I may repost it in our story so you can see the harvest I had from last year. But yep. Wow. Okay, great. And then did you bring in soil for your for that area or you just used the compost that you made at home? Um, I used just a little bit, um, not much at all as far as a bagged organic soil. Um, I just really wanted to try the soil here in the ground and then just our compost. Um, but we did add just a little bit of uh, bag soil. Okay. All right, I'll take you over here to my planter. My planters this year, last year, I normally put um, my turnips, my root vegetables in it. 
Um, but I really wanted to have more uh, lettuce and kale. Um, I just, I don't know, here lately feel like when I go into a grocery store, food line, whatever it be, Publix, it's hit or miss with finding fresh lettuce. Um, so I really wanted to make that a thing. So that's why this whole planter here is full of butter, butter crunch lettuce is what I have. My favorite. Yes, I have grown to love it. <laughs> So um, that's why I have in these. Um, these are transplants as well, um, but I'll also do seeds um, for these as well. Um, have a little bit of oregano herb in this one. So this would be like our five gallon smaller bag. So if you have just a really small space, this herb, herbs will grow pretty well in a five gallon bag. Then I have sage here. And then I have basil here. Um, as you can see, something's been trying to munch on my basil already. And then over here I have kale. Um, so I have curly kale. Um, and I think that is like a black magic kale variety. So this is my kale planter. And that's pretty much it. I hopefully plan to put some flowers here these little or maybe some herbs here in these little bricks that we had left over. And, oh yeah, so that's a really great idea. Again, extending the space that you have using the end of those cinder blocks to put dirt inside and then use those as a planter. So you all, that's, that's a, another thing. If you don't have space or if you don't have a raised bed and you wanna just grow something kind of in a structured area, yeah. You can put the dirt inside of there and use that cinder block kind of as a small space, but you can all, you can probably do some herbs or some pollinator plants in there. Absolutely. I tell you, if you have a bucket of any kind, just as long as it's well insulated, moisture is able to kind of seep out and water is able to get in and out, plant your seeds in it and it can grow. Um, we just lean towards grow bats because, like you said, it's more durable, um, easy to move around. I tell you, when we had to move this summer, with we had probably about 10 to 15 bags at the time and had to pile them up on the U-Haul truck. Um, it worked for us. Um, I'm glad we were, we were actually in grow bags versus just being in anything so we could bring our vegetables along with us. Yes, yeah, so grow bags, you all, as you can see, if you, no excuses. And this is really what our show is about, is to give you ideas on different ways that you can grow, different mediums that you can grow in. We've seen the cinder blocks, that's an option. We see the grow bags that are options as well. And so directly growing in the ground, how much space are you all on? Uh, we are on a full acre, actually. Um, if you can look behind me, our land, I don't know if you can see the neighbor's yeah. area where the little sitting area is. So ours yeah. actually extend that far. Um, of course, it'll take some work, um, which we're hoping this fall when the leaf starts to fall off and everything clears up um, to get back up in there. So we have a little bit more space. Wow, that's my goal. I've been looking for a while for an acre, or at least a half an acre, but an acre really is uh, my goal. So hopefully this year I'll be on my acre. Sharon, uh, Shan, Sharon says, grow bags allow the roots to breathe and not get root bound. Yes, if yes. you have really good compost, then yes, the grow bag should help them grow and not get root bound. Quick question before we go, as we wrap up and we finished our tour, um, what type of impact do you think your garden and your page has had on your community? You growing, what type of impact do you think that that has on your community and your family? Uh, I think it has inspired um, a lot of people. I know um, for my immediate family, um, some of them were very surprised that I actually grew that in my, you know, whether it would be tomatoes, I would share with them or cucumbers and they would just joke, you bought that at the store. And I'm like, no, come, come check it out. You can pick it out for yourself. 
Um, so I think it has inspired and incur uh, motivated others um, to know that you too can grow your own food. Um, and that's what Sisters of the Soil um, is about. That's why we started. It was just to show our journey. Like you said, we are two individuals living in two separate spaces. April Rose, some of the similar, but she's branched out and grew um, different things that I have grown. Um, so it's good to kind of see what she's growing versus what I'm growing um, and then to help inspire others. And we've learned from the gardening community as well like I appreciate the comments that you're seeing um, that I can't see, but you've been, you know, reading them. But I appreciate that feedback because that also helps us because um, we're no experts by any means. <laughs> and I think as as gardeners or farmers, you learn more as you grow with people. I'm a master gardener. However, what I learned, uh, what I can tell you and teach you is because I actually put my hands in the dirt and garden with other people from other cultures. I love to garden with other cultures because they teach you little tricks. They teach you like plants that we think are weeds. A lot of times they're not weeds. They're not medicinal weeds. plants like purslane. Everybody in Houston probably has purslane growing in their in their grass, but we pull it out or we spray it thinking that it's weed, a weed, but it actually isn't. It's a medicinal plant. And I learned that from gardening with someone else. And so we're not experts, but I think what I've seen in our community of growers and gardeners is that we really are supportive and we want to share and we want other people to grow. So we're, we share information we an answer questions if we can, but I think that if you are on the fence about gardening or growing, now is the time to start, right? Absolutely. Just, now and, is the time to start. Don't wait. I'm so glad we started when we started. We could have kept pushing it off. Um, you don't have to start big. Start with a few herbs that you like. Um, you know, start small. You don't have to start big at all. Just start. Yeah just start and start small so that you don't get yourself overwhelmed if you're by yourself. But if you have a support system, go ahead and start big. And, and as Sarah mentioned, every time we go out, we are learning from one another. We have to adjust. You, your garden will teach you. If you overwater it or you underwater it, it's right. going to tell you either way, right? It's going to either produce or not produce. If it needs to be fertilized, and if it's nice and healthy, the critters are going to tell you it's nice and healthy because they're going to be yep. <laughs> all your yep. harvest. And so as we wrap up, tell us where we can find you. And then I'm going to ask you one other question for closing. But while we still have our audience on, go ahead and tell us where we can find you. And if people are interested in purchasing some of those grow bags, let us Tell, tell them also where they can find that. All right. You can find us at Sisters of the Soil on Instagram and Facebook. Our website is www.sistersofthesoil.com. Um, and we also do operate in the Etsy page as well. Um, but you can find grow bags there. We um, have our signature seed boxes, seed storage boxes that are a top seller um, that we sell. And we have t-shirts and more. Um, so you can find us there and if you have any questions for us or would like to know anything um, pertaining to us, please shoot us a message. We will reply. Uh, we have many DMs throughout the day and we're always constantly replying back. So don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Sisters, S-I-S-T-A-S -S of the Correct. soil on Instagram. Please follow them. And if you're interested in getting a grow bag, please con contact her on her website or Instagram and her or her Etsy page. Make sure you mention that you saw it, her on Live from the Garden series. And hopefully you'll share your pictures and let us know how you're growing. We'll be super excited about that. Now I do, I always end with the, a question. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go in to a green space, what farm, garden, botanical garden, ocean, something outdoors and green space, where in the world would you love to go? Um, I would love to go to Bali. Mm -hmm. uh, I've 
seen pictures um, and I actually follow like a travel group, group that travels all over the world, but just seeing how fresh everything looks mm -hmm. um, and being able to just go right outside and get it. I would love to go there. So that's on the, the list. On the bucket list, Bali. Oh, wow. That sounds beautiful. That, that would be a place that I would definitely love to visit. And then if we're in Greenville, South Carolina, where should we eat? Greenville, uh, let's see, we have a lot of nice restaurants, um, but my favorite is Tupelo Honey Cafe. Um, and it's probably my favorite for the wrong reason, but they have really great biscuits. <laughs> they have really great biscuits, um, but it's Southern style food. Um, and it's called Tupelo Honey Cafe. Tupelo Honey Cafe. So you all, if you're in Greenville, South Carolina, stop by Tupelo Honey Cafe. I'm a bread girl, so I may have to stop by there and try some of those biscuits, those warm biscuits. All right. Well, Nicole, thank you so much. I uh, want to thank you all again. Today is our first Live from the Garden series in season three, and I am randomly going to be giving away some product. We have a shirt here. It says, <laughs> I don't do needy plants. So we're going to be giving one of these shirts away. And then we also have our let us live t-shirts our official let us live t-shirts i'll be giving those away randomly to someone on this timeline that watch i'll send you a message you'll be a lucky winner and then this one plants don't judge, don't judge. I like plants that. don't judge so get out and get growing if you mess up they'll still love you afterwards yes uh, i like that so one. please you all thank you so much again for joining live thank from you for the garden having me. Nicole, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We are live every Saturday at 5 p.m. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, if you know of someone that should join our show or you would love to see on our show, please invite them. Thank you for watching. If you found this episode inspiring, please tell others about the Let Us Live Edible Garden series. For more inspiring stories and garden tips, visit lettuslive.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. I'll see you live from the garden, and remember, let us let us live.